Okay, hi guys. Uh, this is section 15.4 on page 914. Double integrals and polar coordinates. Uh, I do want to point out that I'm going to be uploading the videos and I'm going to be uploading the PDF. Whatever I write on this screen, you really just have to keep up. And I'm going to upload these notes with the videos. So in Blackboard, you could click on this. It will open up as a PDF. You could print it or view it as you're seeing the videos again. So, you know, so feel free to start writing and rushing to the desk book. All right. So this section talks about polar coordinates. I need a quick reminder for you guys. We just covered polar coordinates last semester. So if you pick a point, say x, y, this is rectangular, and this would be my x, and this would be my y. If I want to convert that to r and theta, there's r, I would notice that r squared is x squared plus y squared from the Pythagorean theorem and if you label this angle as theta I notice that the tan of theta equals y over x so if I was given x and y that's how I would transfer to r and theta and the other way around if I was given r and theta so assume this is the polar group consists of the positive x axis and if I rotate some theta and move some r, if I want to map that along the rectangular coordinates, figure this is x, this is y, well, given the blue, I would know that the cosine of theta would equal the x over the r and if I cross multiply x would equal r times the cosine of theta and similarly y will equal r times the sine of theta and that's really how you convert back and forth between x and y r and theta r and theta and x and y they have few examples as a quick refresher graphing is a must that's really going to come heavy in two dimensions and three dimensions so I'm looking in the book and I want to look at problem number two on page 919. So page 919 of our book. They say describe the given region in polar coordinates. So given an equation, give me the graph, given the graph, give me an equation. We notice here that if I want to describe this, theta runs between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. You must list theta in ascending order. And I notice that r is bound between 1 and 4. And that's pretty much it. And if I want to look at another problem, number four, again, keep in mind here we're given the graph. Pretty soon we're going to go the other way around. They're going to give us the equation description. We have to come up with the graph. And that's the majority of the section. So here, if I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, well, I have x and y so x and y x is 1 y is radical 3 if this is theta then I know that tan of theta equals radical 3 over 1 which means theta equals the arc tangent of radical 3 in quadrant 1 that will make theta equal to pi over 3 and I notice that the angle is actually between 0 and pi over 3. Now I'm looking at r 
I'm trying to figure out what the limitation on R are. And in this case, I know R is running between 0 and this line. So R is really bounded between 0, but I need to know what that line is. That's x equal 1. And if I want to go from x to R and theta, there it is, I know that R, the cosine of theta equals 1, which means R equal 1 divided by the cosine of theta, and R would be the secant of theta. So, I could say that r is between 0 and secant of theta. So that's pretty much how I describe this triangle. This book seems to make more deal of triangles than the previous books that we used. Not a to worry. And if I like to look at If I am to look at problem number eight, oh crap, forgive me. Oh, we go. Sorry guys, I'm learning this as we move on. And again, the graphing dose is a must that's coming up. It's not something that we could get up on. The region enclosed by the semicircle x squared plus y squared and y is bigger than or equal to zero. So let's see how this works. Well, I know that this is actually r squared and this is twice y is r the sine of theta. So I'm looking at r squared equaling twice r the sine of theta or r squared minus 2r the sine of theta equals zero if I factor an r out. Either r equals 0, which is a point, or r equals twice the sine of theta. So that takes care of the equation, but I still have to worry about this value. y is bigger than or equal to 0. That means theta must be always between 0 and pi, ensuring that y is always above the x-axis. Now, if I want to find the area in polar coordinates, now you know what, let me just give it its own space. No need to squish things in. If I wanted to find the area, let's say I'm looking at a region that looks like this. And I want to find the area between those. Oh boy. Okay. Third time will be a trying. Tell you what. There we go. This is better. So, if I want to find the area between those two, let's say from theta to beta. And the region that I'm interested in is really this region. So what we'll do, we'll cut this into many sectors, uh, something that you are used to seeing, we did that in the previous course, and if I take one of those, let's say that one, and if I blow it up, that really looks like And that is R sub IJ. Well, this right here is the change of R. And this right here 
is kind of like the length, but it's an arc length. And we know that S equal R times theta, provided theta is in radians, is the arc length. So the area of this is actually length times width. It's really length times width, which is S times the R. And S is R times the change in the angle times the R. And that would mean that if I want to find the area of that, all what I have to do is trace where it begins and where it terminates. And the area looks something like this when I want to convert from X and Y to R and theta. So every time I convert from X and Y to R and theta, I pick that extra R, the R, the theta. And that's normally how it works. And everything is the same as the previous course, except now you're going to use double intervals to really figure this out. And it's very close to what we did with the rectangular coordinates in the sense of, you know, you have to alter top to bottom to either an arrow, where does it begin, and where does it terminate.